How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic one. This is volume 11, solution calculations. Make sure you got your calculator. Let's go. Okay, volume 11, solution calculations. We look at solving problems involving solutions. We look at some dilutions and then the addition of two solutions. The IB understandings, applications and skills basically focus around solving problems relating to molar concentration, which was in the last video, check that out, and amount of solute and volume. So this first example is on calculating the concentration of the components of a solution, so what the solution's made up of. Calculate the molar concentration of both aluminium and sulfate ions when 30 kilograms of aluminium sulfate is dissolved in 250 litres of water. Remember that litres and decimeters cubed are the same unit, so you need to convert that to decimeters. So the first thing we need to do is write an equation for this relationship. We have aluminium sulfate as a solid and we need to get the formula right. It's dissolved in H2O, so we put the H2O above the arrow and the water is the solvent, so it's a liquid. And that will dissociate the ions into aluminium 3 plus, and there'll be two of them because of the formula, and three sulfate ions because of the formula. That is known as disassociation, where the ionic compound breaks apart into its ions and it needs to be balanced. If it's not balanced, we're going to have a problem later on. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the concentration of the aluminium sulfate because we were given some information about aluminium sulfate. So how would we do that? Well, using the formula from the last video, we would do mole over volume. I have a problem here. I don't have the number of moles yet. So the first thing, thing I need to do now is to work out the number of moles of aluminium sulfate that I started with. So I was given a mass, so I'll use the formula mass over molar mass. We were given 30 kilos, so we need to change that to grams. So we multiply by 1,000 or multiply by 10 to the 3. And then we can divide by the molar mass of aluminium sulfate, which is 342.02, giving us a fairly large amount of mole, 87.71. But that's okay because it was 30 kilograms. That's a lot. So now we can calculate the concentration of the aluminium sulfate that we started with. We divide the number of moles by the number, the volume of solution in decimeters cubed, which in this case is 250, and we get a concentration of 0.351. Now to work out the concentration of the aluminium, what we do is we use the ratio between aluminium and aluminium sulfate. So when this dissolved, it released two aluminium ions. So the concentration of aluminium is two times the concentration of aluminium sulfate. For every one aluminium sulfate, we released two aluminium ions. So I multiply the concentration by two, which gives me 0 0.702 molar, or mole per decimeter cubed. To work out the concentration of the sulfate ions, well, the ratio is three, to one. So this time we multiply the number of the concentration of aluminium sulfate by three because for every aluminium sulfate there were three sulfate ions. So it's a three to one relationship. So I multiply three times by the concentration which is 0 0.351 and I get the concentration of sulfate to be 1.05 molar or mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, an example where we have an addition of solutions. Calculate the final concentration in mole per decimeter cubed of CaCl2 when 25 centimeters cubed of 0.4 molar CaCl2 is added to 50 centimeters cubed of 1.2 molar CaCl2. So I want you to imagine that we physically have two beakers here. One beaker contains the first concentration and volume, the second beaker contains the second concentration and volume. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to pour those two together. We're going to tip them together to make one solution. A couple of other things to remember here is they're both the same solution. So there's not going to be a reaction going on. All you're going to do is simply add them together and need to determine the concentration. There's going to be no cancelling out because there's no reaction. They are the same chemical. 
So the steps that we need to do this are really important. The first thing that we want to do is to calculate the number of moles of calcium chloride in both of the beakers, beaker one and beaker two. Once we've got the number of moles of CaCO2 in both beakers, then what we want to do is we add them together. So we add the number of moles together. We want to find the number of moles in total. And I've represented that with a little t. After we've got the number of moles total, we can then try and work out the concentration. So the concentration will be the number of moles in total divided by the volume total, because we've tipped the two solutions together, so the volume has increased as well. So find the number of moles, divide it by the volume, and then we can work out the concentration. So here is the working out. First thing that we need to do is find the number of moles of CaCl2 in both of the beakers. How are we going to do that? We've been given a concentration and a volume, so N equals C times V. Please remember to change centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed, so you need to divide that by a thousand. So in beaker number one, we have the number of moles as 0 0.010 molar, or mole per decimetre cubed. In beaker number two, I apply the same process, work out the number of moles, C times V, to determine the number of moles of CaCl2 in that beaker, which is 0 0.06 mole. All right, now I think about tipping those two solutions together. So the number of moles in total will be the addition of beaker one plus beaker two. So I add those two things together to give me 0 0.070 mole. Okay, now I'm ready to calculate the concentration. So the concentration of CaCl2 will be the number of moles total divided by the volume in total. So we've got the number of moles, 0 0.070, and the volume, well, that was 50 centimetres cubed plus 25 centimetres cubed, which is 75 centimetres cubed. But don't forget, I've got to change that to decimetres. So 0 0.075 is our volume in decimetres cubed. And now I'm ready to do the calculation for the concentration, which leads me to 0 0.93 molar or mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, the process of adding more solvent to a solution is known as dilution. When a solution is diluted, the particles become more widely spaced and the concentration decreases. There's a direct relationship between volume and concentration, and it looks like this, C1 V1 equals C2 V2. And it's kind of like an initial and then a final setup. So we've got a, a solution, which is our initial concentration, our initial volume, and then we've diluted it with water, for instance, and then what's the final concentration? In a question, it's kind of like a before and after. So they talk about they had this before and then they had this after the dilution, and that gives you a hint of what you need to use. So calculate the molarity of CaCl2 in 200 centimeters cubed of 0.40 molar CaCl2 is diluted to 400 centimeters cubed with water. So our initial volume was 200, our initial concentration was 0.4, and then our final volume is 400, and we need to work out the concentration after the dilution. So that's our C2, so we wanna find C2, what's the concentration after? So we can rearrange this formula, C1 V1 over V2, and then we plug in our values. Our C1 was 0 0.4, our V1 was 0.2 decimeters cubed, remember to change to decimeters, and our V2 was 0.4 decimeters cubed. So our concentration ends up being 0 0.20 molar for that solution after the dilution. Now just think about this for a second. What's happened to the concentration of this solution? Well, if we look from C1 to C2, it's halved. The concentration is halved. Now what does that mean? Well, if you think about what they did to the volume, the volume went from 200 to 400. So is there a relationship there between the half and the doubling? Yes, there is. So the volume's doubled, which means the concentration has halved. So if you get a multiple choice question like this, and it's nice round numbers like doubling and halving, 
If the volume doubles, the concentration will half. So you could do that question actually without doing too many calculations. Okay, so another dilution example. How much water must be added to 50 mils of a 2 molar solution of sodium carbonate to dilute it to 0.5 molar? So, things that give it away, the before and after, and they've talked about adding water, so that is a dilution question. So we start off with our formula, C1V1 equals C2V2. And what is it we want to find in this reaction? Well, they told us the initial volume was 50, the initial concentration was 2, and then the final concentration is C2. So they must be talking about V2. What's the final volume? So V2 would be equal to C1 V1 over C2. Plugging in our values, we have C1, which is 2 molar. V1, 50 mils. Let's change that to decimeters cubed. So 0.05 divided by C2, which is 0.5 molar. That's going to tell us our volume V2. So plugging that in, we get 0.200 decimeters cubed. Now, is that the actual answer? So we're saying here that the volume V2 would be 200 decimeters cubed. Now, that's the volume in total. But the question says, how much water must be added? Added and the volume in total is slightly different. So the volume added would be the final volume, 0.2 decimeters cubed, take away the initial volume, 0.05 decimeters cubed, which gives us 0.15 decimeters cubed, the amount we needed to add to make that solution. And that's 150 mils or 150 centimeters cubed. So be really careful of that kind of question. If they ask you for the volume added, you need to do final takeaway the initial. Okay, volume 11, some top tips. Know the subtle difference between those type of questions, especially if it's addition of solutions or dilution. Be really careful with those ones. And remember, the volume added would always be V2, take away V1. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more. And I'll see you next time.